Mr. Kosar. Well, thank you, and bless you for bringing this, this open, <laughs> open hearing. I know you guys are extremely busy, so to take the time is really, that's, it's great. Um, thank you for permitting me to testify today. My name is Kevin Kosar. I'm the Vice President of Policy at the R Street Institute, a free, thing, free market think tank here in Washington, D.C. I also co-direct the Legislative Branch Capacity Working Group bipartisan gathering of experts and congressional staff who meet monthly on Capitol Hill to discuss ways to reform Congress to meet the demands of the 21st century. Our aim, as we like to say, is to make Congress great again. <laughs> now, I'm here today to encourage the committee I'm to make... Great. I mean, <laughs> great or, well, I think, well, I think so. But there's this public opinion problem. I've seen those. I've seen those. Yeah. So I'm here today to encourage the committee to make public access to CRS reports more equitable. In short, lobbyists and others within the Beltway can get copies of CRS reports much more easily than the average member of the public. This is not fair, as it is the public whose tax dollars support CRS. So in my limited time, I'm going to make two points, which um, I didn't make in my written testimony. I figured I wouldn't want to be redundant. Uh, first, no harm can come of making the reports more equitably available to the public. I spent more than a decade working at CRS as an analyst doing nonpartisan research for Congress and as an acting research manager overseeing the work of 10 of our analysts. I love the agency, as do the other former uh, and retired CRS employees who signed on to the, lever, the letter. We've 570 years of collective experience at the agency. Some of those folks started back in the early 70s. Uh, I only left in 2014. We're all convinced that this is the right thing to do and that no harm will come of it. The second point I'd like to make is that uh, Congress has always made CRS reports available to the public, but it's been in an ad hoc way and it's become an increasingly disorganized way. For example, um, I have a copy of a 1979 CRS annual report which lists dozens of CRS documents that were published by Congress as public documents in the form of hearings. They were included in the hearings as committee prints introduced into the congressional record. And when those are printed as those documents, as you all know, they go out all over America to the federal depository libraries and elsewhere. So Congress has been doing this for decades. It's not as if CRS reports have been secret. Um, when the internet arrived roughly 20 years ago and hit Capitol Hill, we still have Congress releasing even more CRS reports to the public. Committees, individual members, various offices within the two chambers put the reports online. Uh, congressional staff frequently give them out to interest groups, constituents, lobbyists, people who ask for them, who know to ask for them, which explains why if you go online you will find thousands upon thousands of CRS reports scattered all over the place some on government websites, some on private websites, they're everywhere. Um, so to conclude, what I and other former CRS employees are advocating is that Congress continue to publish the reports, but to do so more consistently. By my light, it makes sense to have, say, GPO do it, since its job is to make authenticated government documents accessible to the public, and GPO has previously published CRS reports, like the Evolving Congress, which was a very thick volume on Congress that it published in late 2014, and over the decades it's published CRS reports in the form of committee prints and the documents I previously mentioned. Um, nobody is here is advocating that CRS's mission or fundamental nature be changed in any way, shape, or form. Nobody's asking CRS even have to really lift a finger. All we're saying is that Congress, you've been publishing the reports, why not publish all of them and to do so in one central place and on a consistent basis we think it'd be a great service to the public. And that was that. Thank you. Gentlemen, thank you for your testimony this, mo this morning. I think, you know, this committee remains committed to finding ways to open up transparency uh, and make the work of Congress more accessible to the voters and constituents that uh, want to know what's happening here. And as I think Mr. Schumann mentioned, or maybe it's Mr. Tarver, uh, that they want to know the votes, the, the debate, they want to know what's happening because they want uh, uh, to and I think be informed. They also want to be able to hold their elected officials accountable. So I think the testimony you're bringing today is important to me. I know it's important to Mr. Ryan as well and the whole committee. So we thank you for being here. Um, this issue has been, I'll, I'll deal with the CRS issue maybe for my first questions for the folks. And Josh, if you have thoughts on it, you can jump in as well. 
Um, this issue regarding CRS reports has been kicked around for a number of years. I think the committee has voted on it. Um, certainly you mentioned there's legislation to do this. And uh, I think there are, uh, we have heard a, a, a couple of different objections and I th maybe you could address uh, those objections you know, straight on. I think one of them has been that um, the widespread dissemination of these reports might increase uh, pressure on CRS as groups or lobbyists try to influence the research and analysis that comes out. So knowing the impact of this research and knowing that the report's coming out, it could, and some have argued, lead to putting more pressure on the CRS uh, workers themselves might influence their work. Um, and I guess as a follow-up to that question, would you see a need for the CRS to establish a public inquiries office to manage an increase in outside questions, opinions, and influences? Or do you see this issue really as something that is a, a non-issue that wouldn't actually happen? Can we yeah. take first cut? Yeah, please. Um, well, as we, as we all know, the most politically interested and active individuals are in this town for the most part. They're the ones who come and lobby and they advocate, et cetera, et cetera. They've had access to CRS reports for years. And I can tell you, my experience, they have no effect. Um, no effect on the research that CRS does. Um, I should also mention that uh, it was about five, six years ago, WikiLeaks dumped something like 6,700 CRS reports. It was a big to-do. Washington Post ran a story. Um, you would think that this dump would all of a sudden have created some sort of public pressures on CRS. I was there. Nothing happened. I was worried. Other people who worked there were kind of like, wow, what's going to happen? Are people going to start calling us up? No. Didn't happen. So I've just seen no empirical basis for this anxiety. Um, if, especially if we redact the information so people are not contacting analysts directly, mm -hmm. that would even further diminish. But like I said, there's tens of thousands of CRS reports out there already with analyst contact information, my old phone numbers on reports that are floating around out there from five years ago. And uh, it's not, it's just not been a problem. Yeah, that's right. 